look, that's cool. They're blowing in the wind. How'd you do that, Jamie? Get a plane, scale it roughly into shape. Let's make a material. Call it pinboard. Take a picture of a pinboard and put it in. Almost. Better UV map it. Do one of the easiest UV maps in your life. Cool. Maybe we can make it better by being bumpier. Add a bump. Put that in the height. Put that in the normal. And it's a little bit bumpy. Now make a poster. I'll add another plane. Rotate it into place. Scale it to poster kind of size, I guess. Maybe it'll be A3, A1. I don't know. We can make this bigger. We can make it smaller. Just make it however you want. The key to all that is to add a bunch of paper. Make some loop cuts with Control R. Then right click subdivide a few times. Now turn proportional editing on. And kind of move it around, squish it around a bit, and make it look not uniform. Fun little tip change the fall off to random, and it will randomize the effect. Right click, shade smooth. Paper doesn't look like that. Then shift D and duplicate a bunch of times and move this around to wherever you want it on this board. It really is up to you. The more time you spend on it, the more real it will look. But I'm going to do it quite quick and lazy like this because I'm only showing you the effect. Be sure though to at least make it look a little bit random. Add a new shader, call it posters. Then load in an image, maybe like this, that has a bunch of posters on it that you want. Only two of these were not made by AI, can you guess which ones? Drop this in, put it as a base color, that doesn't look right. Gotta do our old friend UV mapping again. Select a polygon on one, press Ctrl L, then on the UV side, press A, S for scale, and choose a poster that you want. I'll do this one. I'll do this one. This one. Control L. I definitely want this guy. Let's get this fuzzy little dude. And I definitely want this guy. If the scale doesn't look right on them, just fix it. A pin's basically a cylinder made of other cylinders. Add a mesh cylinder. Scale it down. Scale it down. Scale it down. Make sure that you look at a picture of a pin so you actually understand what the hell it looks like. Then make it. Scale that cylinder down. Select this face. I to bevel, take it in, press G, move it down a bit, E to extrude down, then make that little kind of shape at the end. Make sure that you're looking at your reference so you're not guessing what reality looks like. And my favourite bit, make the pin. Look back at your reference and realise that you apparently have no idea what reality looks like. And then fix it. Cool. Right click, shade auto smooth, put the origin in a sensible part. Select the bottom faces, press Ctrl plus on the numpad, add a new material, call it metal, and assign that. Make it, I don't know, metal colored, bump up the metallic, and then take down the roughness, and maybe actually put the color up there. Press Ctrl I to switch the selection, add another material in the material slot, click new, click assign, and this one we'll call uh, plastic. Choose a color for now, I picked green. Go to subsurface, turn it all the way up. Take the roughness down a bit, and sure, that'll do. If you want to make it look a little bit more real, add bevels. Because reality doesn't really have hard edges. That'll do. And let's put these pins in place. Alt-D to make a linked duplicate. Then realize that you put them nowhere near the pin board. Actually try to stick them in. If you're lazy and you want to make them different colors, but don't want to actually get new materials, here's a fun trick. Make a color ramp. Change it to constant. Add in a bunch of points. And make them different colors. Pump that into base color. Add an input object info random. And then pump that into the color ramp. Now look, every time you make a new one, it's going to be a random color. That's useful. Okay, cool, but this is looking very static. We want it to blow in the wind. Don't worry, we're doing that now. Go to the physics tab. Add in a soft body. Press play. And look, there you go. What do you mean that's not realistic? Well, we need to add wind. Shift A. Go to force field. Add wind. Make a point of direction you want it to go. Press play. What do you mean that's not realistic? Okay. Add a force field. Make this one turbulence. Press play. What do you mean it's still not realistic? All right, all right. Go to this tab. Add a vertex group. Call this goal. Now control tab, go into weight paint, and set your weight to about 0.5. Fill it up, make your brush big, and put it everywhere. Okay, now set your weight to 1, 
and make sure that you give a lot of red area where the pins are. Control tab back to object mode, press play. What? That's not working. Then back into soft body, open up the goal, give it the vertex group, choose goal. Now press play. Why does nothing work? Now in the settings, change the strength to 1. Hey, that's close. Now open up the edges, change the bending to 1. And then, yeah, kind of close. Take the plane, add a collision onto it. Then look, they don't go through it. Get the wind, turn up the strength a bit. Then that's maybe a bit too much. Add in some noise to the wind, try about 10. And look, it's kind of fluttering. Take the turbulence, this is the main thing, and change the strength to about 10. Then this is the part that everyone hates. You'll see other tutorials where they pretend they know exactly what values you need, but really it's a bunch of trial and error. So watch as I try and fail many, many times until I get the effect that I want. So these settings work for me. Choose these settings on the turbulence, and this setting on the wind, and that kind of made this. You could play around with the weight paint if you wanted. But Jamie, the back of the paper doesn't look like it's a poster. It's just showing the other end. Fine, let's fix it. Add a modifier, make it a solidify, then just go back a bit, and look, we've given it some thickness. On the solidify, go to materials, change the material offset to 1, then give it another material, call this one, back. Then make the back of the poster whatever you want. Maybe some sort of paper texture, like this. Now look, the back of them is paper. Add on a subdivision surface to them, and now they're nice and soft and pretty. But that made the corners a bit too round. If you don't want the corners to be rounded like that, just add loop cuts and strengthen those corners. You'll need to do it to each one. Should I have told you to do this at the start? Probably. But this is where we are, and we're going to do this together. And maybe we'll make the front a little bit shiny by taking the roughness down. Once you've got an effect you're happy with, you can bake. If you're not happy, just play around with the forces until you get something that you like. I'm making a tutorial, I'm happy enough with this. Go back to the physics tab, open up the kachichi, and hit bake. That's going to commit all that animation to frames so that you don't have to wait for it to calculate every time. And there you go, Luke. Now when you scroll back and forth through the timeline, it's not calculating the physics. So it's there, it's done, it's committed. Then add lights to your scene or whatever. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're making. Just make sure you light it nice. And if it doesn't look nice, don't tell anybody I told you I had to do this. Anyway, I hope that was useful. If it was, maybe like it or share it. Or save it, because you'll probably forget how to do it and you'll need to come back to it. And if you want the Blender file, I'm giving it away for free, because really this only took me 10 minutes. Bye-bye!